What is up, everyone? Brandon First, a.k.a. First Report, representing the first Off the Bench podcast network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. Welcome in to another edition of the NFL Weekly here on the network where we break down everything the NFL has to offer um, from a gambling side of things. It's week 14, folks. Goodness gracious. We are into the month of December and yeah, it is uh, it's playoff push, and we're we're counting down the games. Unfortunately, it's going to be the Super Bowl before we know it. Um, but of course, with me as always to help me break it all down is my friend and co-host Raider Jim Martinez. You can find Mister Martinez at Raider Jim Ten Ninety. How you doing tonight, sir? Hey, I'm doing well. It's feeling like football season all of a sudden, and uh, wow, here we are looking at the last. Last few weeks of regular season play, the playoff uh, playoffs are really starting to line up now. Some clear, clear, clear uh, seedings, though. If you look at the look at all the standings in both divisions, the AFC and the NFC, uh, and more importantly, we only have uh, 18 shopping days left until Christmas. If you haven't done any yet, you better get online and get on it. Amen. Yeah, exactly. Get online. That's the other thing. I asked my mom. I told her, I was like, you know, don't go crazy. She's like, oh, we, you already shopped for it, blah, blah, blah. I'm um, just like, yeah, we went we went to the mall. And I was like, whoa, old school. Going wow. to the mall. <laughs> yeah, brick and mortar. Good for y'all. So keeping the, keeping the brick and mortar rolling, uh, my parents there. So good for them. But yeah, 18 days and obviously, um, you know, everywhere you go, uh, you're going to hear the, the, the Christmas carols and you know, shout out the local Kixie station for playing Christmas music from two weeks before Thanksgiving, 24-7. And of course, that's what I have to listen to at work. But I'm not bitter at all. Anyways, moving on to the task at hand, obviously looking ahead for week 14, we'll get to that momentarily. But we're going to take a moment, as always, to look back on, you know, uh, uh, another wild week. Obviously, for me, as an Eagles fan, it's a week I want to forget. Definitely wasn't feeling too well. Um, you know, had, had a little cold going on, um, starting to feel better. And then Sunday came around and look, there is nothing other to say than we, we, we got taken out to the woodshed and, uh, we got beat, we got beat pretty well or pretty good, but hopefully it's just round one and we can afford to lose round one to those guys. Um, get to the Eagles thoughts momentarily, but Raider Jim, what were your thoughts? Week 13, your Raiders had a buy. So it was kind of an opportunity to maybe decompress a little bit but what were your thoughts overall week 13 week 13 like i say you look at the picture and uh, some of the things are really starting to come into focus i will tell you though i sat when we talked last week i sat and was just adamant standing on my soapbox saying what are they thinking how do you send san francisco on the road into philadelphia and they are the favorites in that game i did not right up to kickoff i did not believe it not even at halftime did I believe it, but my gosh, did Brock Purdy put together a game 314 yards in the passing game, and wow, and unfortunately for your Eagles, and I and I mean this in all sincerity, I'm not just trying to be a wise guy and, and jab you in the ribs about it, they have, uh, they don't have an easy road now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, you know, they came from that game, they're going to go into Jerry's house on Sunday, and wow, all of a sudden, uh, they're standing at number one, you know, standing by themselves on the top of the NFC mountain is kind of looking a little bit shaky right now. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of a game plan they put together. But my goodness, so we had the, or the NFC West, the AFC West. We said it earlier, we both have said it throughout the course of the first 12, 13 weeks. This isn't last year's chiefs or the year before's chiefs this is a different group of chiefs and to go in and lose like they did at lambo and they got owned i mean the uh, the line play don't get me wrong it wasn't poor poor it wasn't you know raider poor but at the same time they got handled by the packers line on both sides of the ball so uh what's going to happen there that's got to be very uh frustrating for the Denver Broncos who were coming along frustrating on two points because one, if they would have won, if they could have held on and won against uh, Houston on Sunday, they'd just be one game out. Now they're not just one game out, but still 
Uh, they got a little tougher road to try to get in there as a wild card even. Back to the Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs too, they are now the number, I think they're the number four seed as mm -hmm. it stands right now, yeah. which is uh, not what they're used to, and that's not what the returning Super Bowl champions are supposed to do, especially when they have a lot of the same personnel. So that's kind of like the, oh my gosh, the what ifs and the uglies. But what about Mike McDaniel and the Miami Dolphins? Holy cow. These guys are just rolling. He proved before he got to Miami. And I think I know what I'm doing on the offensive side of the ball. Well, these guys are just racking up yards. I, Tyreek Hill, five receptions, 157 yards. And he got 138 of those yards with two receptions in the first half. Uh, they're just they're just doing it on the offensive side of the ball. They even have a good running game right now. Uh, uh, Devon, I think it's uh, Akon, is how you say it. Yes. And he, you know, he rolled up another 100 yards uh, on the ground. I mean, they're just, they're firing on all cylinders, and they're going to be trouble for somebody. Uh, the big oops of the week for me goes to uh, Robert Solly, who decides he's going to, text stuff to people about I can't stand my starting quarterback and that that's not a quote but he did say he's not pleased with his starting quarterback that's not his choice and uh, you know uh, I live by one of the rules I live by is know your enemies and even if they think you think that that's the person that's not going to sell you down the river know your enemies and for that guy to put that out there and just leave Saleh hanging Boy, he did no favors for him, for the locker room, or for the Jet fan base. And then uh, oh. the only other thing would be, uh, in going back to the AFC West, Chargers better take a, a long look in the mirror if they're supposed to come out anytime, uh, not this season, of course, but next season. Are they already at this rebuilding phase because they're going to have a new coach? And who knows? Maybe Solly, Solly gets out of New York and ends up on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought up the Sala thing. Uh, there was a little bit of, I guess, kind of an update. And I don't know the, the guy's name. I think it's Boliano or something like that, obviously, in the New York City media sphere. So you know how yeah. that is. It's very competitive. And, yeah, he pretty much said he, he you know, he had texted Robert Sala and had said, hey, you know, are you going back to, um, you know, Zach Wilson? And, and Sala had texted back, are you bleeping kidding me or are you kidding me? And now that person went Oops. on with Boomer Esiason and Boomer Esiason was very frustrated with him because he's a former athlete. And he knows that, look, you you tell certain media people certain things and it's almost like a test, right? Like I'm going to tell this Kevin AC, just the person off my head. I'm going to tell him this. And if it gets out, I'll know it's him. But if it doesn't get out, you kind of build up a rapport, you know, little things like that. Um, so Boomer was kind of given, you know, this this uh, sports writer, you know, media guy, the riot act. And, and the media guy did walk it back. Now, if you believe him, fair or not. But what, what that guy did kind of say to walk it back, he said, what Sala meant to kind of say was, are you kidding me? Was he was more referring to that individual being so negative of Zach Wilson and kind of telling him on Sala all season, you need to bench Wilson. You need to bench Wilson. And Sala was kind of saying, are you kidding me of all people who should be asking me to put Zach Wilson back in? That's what his story is. I think a lot of what that is, is he probably uh, Sala, you know, gave him a call and said, what the F bro. Um, and he had to walk that back. Um, but it is a it is a dumpster fire, um, and and I think it's pretty much now decided that we are not going to see the Aaron Rodgers show this year. Um, you know, uh, I I don't think there's any point to seeing it. Um, but yeah, it, it's a right. tough look out there um, on the on the Dolphin side of things. They look incredible, um, and I think the big winners of the week in the AFC, besides just the Dolphins, were the Baltimore Ravens, who had a bye week and look around and go, whoa, we lost the two teams that were up with us in terms of the win-loss. You had Jacksonville and Kansas City. They both take L's, and now Baltimore is all alone at the top of the AFC all by themselves. Um, really interesting stuff there. Uh, and then, you know, for the Eagles side of it, um, 
Look, it, it was a tough day. And one, I guess there were two somewhat, well, three silver linings, or at least things that I had to remind myself. First and foremost, <clears throat> excuse me, the Eagles do still control their own destiny. And yes, it's going to be a tough road, especially this weekend, Sunday night football against the Cowboys. Pretty much have to win that game or else the the division, not only the NFC, but the division now comes into question. Now, the Cowboys do have a tougher road than we do. I believe they have Buffalo and Miami both um, you know, going forward, and at least one of those on the road, maybe both. Um, and there might be another interesting one. I think they also play the Lions. Anyways, so they have a little tougher of a road. Uh, I did dive into kind of the tie-breaking scenarios, and I thought it would be an easy little, oh, this, this, and this. It's not that easy. There's a lot of things if the two teams tie uh, or split the season series, I should say. Um, so I won't go into that. But one thing that did jump out in the tie-break was – it was the total points scored against common opponents. And as bad as the Eagles looked against the Niners, they weren't as bad as the, uh, the Cowboys were against the Niners. So that could, who knows, the fact that the Eagles put up 19 points and the Cowboys only put up 10, that could come into a factor into a tiebreak scenario. Once again, I'm kind of, you know, looking for anything after that, that butt whooping. Um, but the Eagles did also sign Shaq Leonard, who was kind of the golden linebacker piece um, after he was released by the Colts. Um, he was also possibly going to then, uh, excuse me, going to Dallas. Instead, he is going to be heading to Philadelphia. And that's key because the Eagles linebackers got absolutely roasted. If you, James Bradbury, he didn't give up. He, he wasn't even targeted. None of uh, his coverages, he was never targeted. Darius Slay only allowed, I think, three catches on eight targets. But, boom, excuse me again, um, Nicholas Morrow. And look, I don't, I hate to be, you know, critical and things like that. But he allowed six receptions on eight targets for 175 receiving yards for two touchdowns. Kyle Shanahan looked at the Eagles defense and said, look. They're going to get after us on the defensive line um, and their corners are really good. Let's attack the linebackers. That's what they did. The Eagles weren't ready for it. Um, unfortunately, hopefully Shaq Leonard, not necessarily a coverage linebacker, but you know, is someone to bring in how we do in his thing. So hopefully that helps one final um, thing just to kind of piggyback on what you talked about in the AFC West. Um, you know, if Denver would have won that game, if they go out and they win that game, not only, are they only one game back? I believe they will play Kansas City one more time. That's correct. And, and they've already beaten Kansas City. So it's like, it's almost like they're tied at that point. Um, now, you know, they would have to play that game in Arrowhead if I do remember correctly. So a lot of things up in the air, but it's a lot different now. It's a two game lead. Um, and I think Kansas City, my goodness, eight and four, even after the way they started against Detroit. And the, this is, still I think the best defense that Patrick Mahomes has ever had and I that scared me more than anything this year I figured the offense is going to figure it out well guess what the offense has not figured it out I will say um the 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 non-pass interference call uh on uh MVS where he's climbing over the back really really bad call um Sunday night football uh there so Tough stuff, but I did see a funny tweet um, that, you know, anything that's thrown towards MVS because he can't catch the ball is considered an uncatchable ball. So you can pretty much do whatever you want. Kind of kind of mean there, but you know what? Hey, we're, we're having fun here. Um, but yeah, with that being said, time to kind of focus our attention to week 14. Um, final week of buys, only two teams on buys. And I don't think anybody is heartbroken to see the Cardinals or the Commanders. Uh, not grace your television screens this weekend. However, um, ooh, Thursday night football, folks, if you don't have Amazon Prime, don't go run out and get it for this game. It's going to be the New England Patriots. They will be heading to Pittsburgh to face the Pittsburgh Steelers. Patriots 2-10, and 10, Steelers 7-5. and five. The Steelers are going to be six-point favorites at home. Our lowest over-under of the season to date it actually dropped. I think it was 33 and a half to start. It's all the way down to 30. Raider yep. Jim, what are your thoughts? Patriots at Steelers. 
Well, I will tell you, when <laughs> when you only give up six points, and I understand the rain was a real factor at that game, the Chargers and the Patriots, but when you only give up six points and you're at home and you can't even cover the spread, let alone win the game, I mean, how bad is New England? Uh, two and ten, I guess that tells me enough. And now they're going to play against Pittsburgh, seven and five. Pittsburgh still looking at a pretty good position. Let's see, they are in second. They're tied for second at one of the teams we talked about. But as you said, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, everybody, nobody could win. Nobody could win in that division last week. And Pittsburgh, I think Tomlin's remark after the game was uh, they played JV football. Yep. And, you know, you don't want to hear uh, the head coach talking about you that way, but he was absolutely right. So the other thing that we've seen in the 2023 season is inconsistency. There has not been anything consistent or, you know, inconsistency is more, more uh, the rule than the exception, it seems. So if I saw New England roll into Pittsburgh this coming week and put 22 on the board, I wouldn't be that surprised because that's the up and down the way it's been, it seems, this year. However, after what I saw against the Chargers, uh, we've got a spread right now. Of Pittsburgh is the six-point favorite, the over-under is at 30. I really don't see that this is going to be an over. The weather, there might be some rain, but it's not anything definite. It's just going to be a little chilly over there in Pittsburgh. Uh, at seven and five and knowing that they've got to fight with everything they've got if they want to stay in the playoff picture. Look at Pittsburgh to uh, cover this one. At, I, I would take a half a point, five and a half, but I think defensively they're going to have just too much on the ball for uh, New England. New England's offense is going to continue to perform the way they have. Um, now, Kenny Pickett won't be playing. Does that change your thought? It, it will be uh, Mitch Trubisky. Okay, yeah, I'm for yeah. that reason, I'm actually going to roll. Okay, yeah, I'm going to roll. I'm going to take New England plus six, and a lot because of what you kind of started with, the crazy up and down season. Um, if Pittsburgh can't take care of business against Arizona, um, I don't know. Uh, and New England is probably the worst offensive football team we've seen um, the last three weeks. So there have been 48 instances of a team – um, allowing their opponents into single digits, so less than 10 points. They're 45 and three in those games. The Patriots account, amount for all three of those losses. It's 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 crazy. They have lost now three straight games without allowing double digit points. It blows my mind. It's almost I almost feel like you accidentally kick a field goal in the NFL. I feel like most of these kickers can kick 55-yard field goals. That's only to the, like, 30. I mean, we're not talking – I mean, a good return, and all you need is 15 yards. I, I It blows my mind. And, look, I haven't watched – well, no, I actually didn't even watch the entirety of the New England-Philadelphia um, game at the start of the year. But I haven't watched an entire New England game, and I'm not going to watch this game. I'll tell you that right now. But – I don't know what is going on, um, but with that being said, I just I, I'm going to take the points. Kind of my default this season: two teams that have been inconsistent just take the points and and hope for the best. Um, so I'm going to take New England plus six, um, and I'm going under here. Look, both of these: Mitch Trubisky and ba uh, versus Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones or I don't know Steve Belichick. Who knows? Who knows? Going to be starting for the for the Patriots um, these days. So I'm going to take the under. Uh, this is going to be a game that, you know, you, you, you're you kind of, you got to be a big time football fan to sit down and watch this one. And who knows? Yeah. Like we said, maybe, maybe we could see 34, 31, but I am not anywhere near expecting that um, for this one. So, but moving on Raiders back in action, they will be hosting the six and six Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Raiders are coming into this week at five and seven. The Vikings will head on the road as three point favorites and the over under a little more normal here of 40 still low, but over under of 40 Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Raiders hosting the Vikings. Yeah. The, the Raiders are still searching for their identity. Uh, so many members of the Raider nation that I, I follow online that 
oh, you know, we've got this, the new coach, and he's got the swagger, and he's, you know, he came from Compton, he liked the L.A. Raiders, and I think he's a good guy. I think he's a good guy in the interim. He might be a good guy to give a full season shot to, uh, but regardless, Minnesota's playing for potentially uh, a shot in the playoffs. The Raiders are not playing for a shot in the playoffs, and the Raiders are the epitome of inconsistency. The only thing they have going for them this week is they their winning record is at home. They're, I think they're four and two at home. Uh, they've only won one game on the road. If they were playing in Minnesota, this would be a done deal. But I think Minnesota comes in offensively. They're going to just be too much for the Raiders, uh, who keep trying to plug and play. Let's get rid, cut this guy. Let's cut that guy. Let's sign somebody else. And when you don't have consistency in your lineup, not to just fill in for injuries and things like that. That already tells you you don't have confidence in what you're putting out there on the field. Minnesota definitely covers this one. What do we do? Give me that half point, though. I'll take it at two and a half. Uh, over under at 40. I'm going to go over in this one, and that's only because I think Minnesota is going to roll up 28 points, and I think that the Raiders could very well get, you know, 13, maybe two touchdowns. Uh, but I see, <laughs> unfortunately, these days I see it more of one touchdown and a couple uh, couple field goals. And uh, that'll be enough to put them over at the Vikings to get that 28. And the other thing is, Josh Jacobs, even though he is not the answer to the running game, uh, he is slightly injured. I think he's got a, a bruised quadriceps, something like that. But one of his legs is not 100%. So even that, that could take a, a little bit away from their offense. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the other side here. I'm going to buy a half a point um, for the Raiders here and 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 see if we can't, uh, you know, get it that way. Um, get myself to plus three and a half, see if a field goal still saves me. I, I don't know. The Raiders, at the very least, I just think there is more of an effort. And, and I hate, I kind of, I get frustrated. It's like, oh, we didn't, you know, we didn't put the effort in for McDaniels. Um but we're going to put the effort in for Pierce. But at the same time, I don't know what goes on, goes on behind the scenes. I want to hope that everyone's professional and always putting out max effort. But I think it's pretty obvious that this team is a lot more comfortable um, and uh, they're enjoying at least playing um, under Antonio Pierce. And and I've look, Josh Dobbs, I think he's a really good backup quarterback, but I think that's where his ceiling was. And I think as these teams are getting more film on him in the Vikings offense, I think he's able to kind of break things down. Um, and I've been kind of impressed with the Raiders. And I know moral losses, moral victories in losses, never been a big fan of those. But I, I, I kind of go back to the to the Dolphins game. They, you know, I don't know if they were ever really on the verge of, you know, winning that game, but they were never always out of it or fully out of it. Um, I don't know. There's something with this Raider team. And as you said, they play really well at home. I think that fan base is really kind of embracing the Antonio Pierceness of it. Um, so I'll, I'll take the Raiders, maybe even think about the money line closer to Sunday, but definitely for right now, plus three and a half. Um, and just kind of on that vein, I think if the Raiders do cover, they're going to need to keep this to kind of a close, you know, 20 to 17 type game. So give me the under. I think that's kind of the, if this turns into a shootout, you're right. Yeah. Vikings cover easily. Um, and uh, it's, it's just a moment where you, you just wonder by how much, um, but I, I think the Raiders can, can, this is a winnable game for the Raiders. So I think they, they get the job done at home, but moving on to, uh, really, the probably the best game of the day session. It's going to be the Buffalo Bills at the Kansas City Chiefs. Two teams that, if you would have said we'd see Buffalo at six and six and Kansas City at eight and four, week fourteen, you would have told me that week one. I would have thought you were crazy. Um, but that's where we are. Kansas City will be two and a half point favorites. The over under is forty seven and a half. And yes, we have to say it. Taylor Swift is not on tour, so you have to imagine she will be at the game. But it the 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 streak is over. I saw that she went to the game, or she was going to be at the game yes, on did. Sunday. And I put some prop bets in on uh, Kansas City to win and uh, Travis Kelsey to do a lot of you know score some touchdowns. That didn't happen, so I don't think you can just fully go with that on the gambling side. If you were, but just had to throw that out there. Uh, Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Buffalo heads to Kansas City as 
underdogs. Well, there's that word again, inconsistency, and, and Buffalo might be the poster child for inconsistency <laughs> this year. You never know which team is going to show up. They showed up last weekend. They played a very, very good game. And really, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's six and six, and they're second to the Dolphins. Uh, they're three games behind, three games in back of the Dolphins. Their odds of making the playoffs are very, very slim. Probably not going to happen, especially it's only going to take one more loss. They lose to Kansas City. It's all but a done deal in my mind. Uh, and what's going to happen with this one? Kansas City is that uh, is that team that's going to be in a bad mood that we talk about. They're going to be at home. Surprisingly, here we are. It's going to be the second weekend of December, and there is still no snow in the forecast for Kansas City. Uh, but it's going to be cold. It's going to be chilly. Buffalo is going to roll into town. What's going to happen? I think you're going to see a better game out of the wide receiving core for uh for Kansas City, I think Kansas City is going to be able to do uh, a little more targeting of Kelsey. Kelsey did not have that strong of a game the other day either. And quite honestly, maybe it's just because I'm focusing more on him and and wondering from the beginning of the year when he came in a little bit banged up, is he uh, is he is his mind wandering? Is he sidetracked? Why he sure looks like he's lost a half a step. He was never a track star, but he sure looks like he's lost a half a step. He's almost reminded me of, uh, of that last quadrant of the Antonio Gates career when it's like, why do you guys keep putting him out there? He's going to catch the ball, but he's just a target after that. You're going to get swarmed on by three guys. So it's going to be up to the Kansas City defense, and DBs are going to have to play their hearts out and the line. They can't get owned at the line like they did against Green Bay, but I think Mahomes is going to have a talk with these boys before they go out there on Sunday. Uh, wow, this is uh, this is a money line game. So I'm just going to have to take the Chiefs on the money line. The over under, I've seen it go from 47 and a half to 48 and a half. Uh, I do think there's going to be some points scored. And again, if there's no precipitation, then I'll take that 47 and a half and go over on that. I agree with the over there um, and the Kansas City side. I, I will take two and a half. Um, I think this is a field goal game. I think they can get this done um, with the field goal. Uh, I think we're very, very close to Andy Reid just saying, screw it. Let's see if we can get away with these guys wearing stick them. Um, and I, I mean, and, and, and you know what? Hey, find me or whatever. We'll deal with that on the field. But at some point, you know, you got to be. I don't, I don't think Andy has a whole lot of hair left, but if there was a whole lot there, it'd be getting pulled out right now. Um, Cause it, it, it's really, really frustrating to see this. I will say this though, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Isaiah Pacheco might be one of the most violent runners. And I mean that in a, in a, in a positive sense. Um, he looks like somebody that he looks like a smaller compact. He reminds me the way he runs of Mike Allstock. And I know that's crazy oh, yeah. because he is, he does not look like Mike Allstott. He is the kind of the antithesis of that, but he runs, he, he's a bowling ball. He, he's almost like a, the inertia. He wants to absorb contact and run through people. Um, and Kansas city, for whatever reason, you know, obviously they were dominated this past Sunday on the offensive line. So that got difficult, but I feel like if they can rely more on that and, and, and find ways for these wide receivers to, you know, I mean, it sounds so simple as catching the ball. Um, but it's really interesting to see how bad this team, you know, how this, this offense has kind of fallen off, you know, mm -hmm. Eric B enemy wasn't the one teaching them how to catch or anything like that. It's not like he, he, he took the magic gloves with him to Washington. Um, so I don't know. I feel like this is a team that I'm still expecting and waiting to put in a 45 point performance this might be the week, um, but I definitely think they do cover the two and a half. Um, definitely wouldn't be surprised to see Buffalo come in and be that inconsistent, whoa, world beaters like they almost were against the Eagles. They were fantastic last time we saw this team. Um, so we'll see. But Kansas City, minus two and a half. I like that. And then the over 47 and a half. So moving on to the uh, other side of the AFC West, an interesting one, kind of a battle for uh the unexpected seller at least on the chargers side of things uh it is the denver broncos they are heading to los angeles 
um, as three point underdogs. Oof. All right. The Cal or the, the Broncos at six and six, they're heading to LA face the five and seven chargers. Chargers are going to be three point favorites in this one. The over under sits at 44 Raider Jim. What are your thoughts? Broncos at chargers. Yeah, interesting game right here. And you're right. This To me, this is more than just the battle for the seller. This is almost a battle for Denver to, again, look at what they've got in front of them. They're not going to look past the Chargers, but it's a division game. They've got the Chiefs coming up towards the, the last part of the season, the last few weeks of the season. For all intents and purposes, if Buffalo takes care of business and beats the Chiefs, Wow, guess what? Denver all of a sudden is right back in the running to uh, make a run at the AFC West. And and they are firing on all cylinders themselves right now. They're playing, they are playing consistent football. And, you know, they hung in there last week. They got that win. I think they ended up winning like 22 to 17 or something like that. Denver? Uh, no, Denver and uh, Denver lost to Houston. Denver, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. They, they, they hung and they lost. That's right. Yeah. At the end. It was a close game. That was probably the only like close game of the morning. Right, right, right. Which again, that was the disappointment is, you know, they would have just been one game out had they yeah. won that game. My, my bad. Uh, but going in against the Chargers, I think the Chargers are starting to show more and more week in and week out. Wow. They just don't have that uh, Eric Coriel look about them. They don't have the unbeatable offense. And, you know, uh, I heard a comment about uh, uh, on the defensive side of that ball, Bosa is still out or is out again. And I forget, uh, it was an incredible number that the national broadcast people hit on. And they said, yeah, Joey Bosa's out. But, you know, this is like the 33rd time he's been out in his career. And so if he's that beat up, guess what? His his 100% days are behind him. Yeah. And he's not going to be that impact player. It's not not unlike the Rams. Aaron Donald's going to be out again, as I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, boy, these guys go out and they give it all, and they're great those first few years. But big bodies like that running into other big bodies, it takes a toll. I think this time, uh, give me plus three and a half for Denver all day long. I do think it's going to go over. I've seen 43 and a half as the line, so I would take over 43 on this one. Uh, it's going to be a good game, but watch out for Denver because the field's going to be dry. Yeah, I um, look, I already have this bet in. When we put the rundown together, or when I put the rundown together last night, I typed that up and I went, wait, Chargers are three-point favorites? Yeah. Um, look, this is going to be 80% Bronco fans. Um, a lot of Bronco fans in Southern California – um, a lot of them, you know, are going to travel even here when they when they used to play here at Qualcomm and Jack Murphy um, when seen, when they actually had a fan base here in San Diego, uh, the Broncos would take things over the Bronco fans, I should say. So I expect the Broncos to get the job done um, for the sake of it. I will buy the hook. I didn't buy the, the, the half point on Bovada. I don't think we need it. I think Denver wins this game um, outright. I might even double up on it and maybe put in a money line bet on Sunday. <clears throat> excuse me, but I, I expect Denver to get the job done. I think Denver is the better football team, no matter what we saw last week, even with Denver losing, I think Denver looked more impressive than the chargers beating uh, uh, the Patriots six, nothing. Oh, yeah. yeah. um, you know, I mean, I've seen more, more offense in little league fields. So, so um, I, I'm not, I'm not buying in on the chargers anytime soon. And um, I, I do, in terms of the over under, this is one I'm definitely not nearly as comfortable with, you know, 44 is right in that pretty much that average number. Um, I'm going to go over. I, I could see this being a 24, 21, 27, 24 type game um, situation. I, I do expect, I don't know, um, Austin Eckler holding on to the football. We'll see if that's going in. And back to the Joey Bosa thing. I believe, I, I'm almost positive, he's a free agent at the end of the year. And I'll tell you this right now, it, we're what, four, five games away from these teams pretty yeah. much? Yeah. They have five games, including this one. I don't expect to see Joey. Joey Bosa isn't that guy that you expect to see playing hurt. Um, so I don't expect to see him going out there uh, and jeopardizing whatever, you know, uh, money he has. And he'll get paid a good amount of money. Um, there will He'll lose out on some money because of the injury issues, but he's going to get paid this offseason. I don't think we see him um, for the Chargers unless things really start to turn. 
Now, I will say uh, it would not be total be totally off brand to see the Chargers figure it out when their final ten game or when their final five games, and go ten and seven and somehow sneak in as the seven seed. It seems like that's kind of how the Chargers do things. I don't expect it to happen this year, and especially because I think they're going to lose this one. So give me Denver, um, and I will take the over as well. Moving on to the Sunday night showdown mm. in Jerry's mm. world. Ugh. I got anxiety, folks, but it is the Denver, excuse me, the Philadelphia Eagles at 10 and 2. They're heading to Jerry's world to face the 9 and 3 Cowboys. Ugh. Um, and the Cowboys are going to be three and a half point favorites, an over under of 53. Obviously, shootout is expected, as you kind of could ex- uh, could figure out. Um I'll get this one started for obvious reasons. The Eagles were very, I think they got exposed on um, Sunday, no doubt about it, by a very, very good football team um, in the San Francisco 49ers. I think the Niners are a better football team than the Dallas Cowboys, but not enough that you just can completely write this team off. I think this week, the Cowboys are rightly um, the favorites. What is interesting is it's only three and a half. I actually expected this to be maybe even five. Um, just because what that tells me is if this was, if this game was, you know, I didn't know it's impossible, but if this game was a Super Bowl or at a neutral site, it would be essentially a pick em. Interesting to me. Um, I, I did the Cardinal sin. I did the thing that I'm never, ever supposed to do. I, I don't think I've ever done it in my gambling life that I could remember. Um, I was very, very confident in the Eagles and I put money on them in the money line this past Sunday. Um, I never do that. The only time I ever bet on the Eagles is for the whole, I call it the emotional hedge. Um, I think Dallas has a very good shot of getting this win, especially considering they're at home. But I will say, I think their defense was exposed by Geno Smith and company last Thursday. I will also say for the Eagles, the schedulers did not do them any favors here. You had oh. the Eagles had that overtime game against Buffalo. And then um, San Francisco essentially had back-to-back Thursday night games followed up by that kind of mini buy with the Eagles playing 98 snaps on defense. Um, and now with Dallas as well. Last time Dallas played was last Thursday when they played against Seattle. Um, so you got kind of two teams back to back. They're two toughest opponents coming off mini buys. It is what it is. I'm not gonna make excuses for these guys. Um, but it is kind of a little frustrating to see that from the schedule maker side of things. Maybe you give us Washington or the giants coming off of mini buys, not the Niners and Cowboys, but I do think the Eagles have a really good shot to win this game, mainly because I feel like this is kind of the de facto NFC East championship, even though I do think Dallas is going to drop one or two more games down the road, but it's a must win for Dallas. I'm not going to give you any, um, you know, betting angle side of it in terms of what I would do. Cause I'm not betting this game. I'm just going to watch this game in the fetal position. Like I normally do when it comes to the Eagles. Um, but I, I think, I think the, the, the Cowboys are probably the, the safe bet on the money line side of things spread. I don't know. This is probably a field goal game. If I'm being honest, um, and the over under, I could see some points being scored. One final thing I will say, um, and I got to make sure. So, Der- yeah, so David Carr, not Derek Carr. I always get him mixed Correct. up. Derek Carr is obviously he's playing for the pay- uh, for the for the Saints, but his brother David Carr, he was the first Carr. He was, of course, the Texans' first quarterback. All that stuff. He had maybe, arguably, the worst take I've ever heard um, in, in quite some time. Um, When he said that the Eagles would be better off starting Marcus Mariota over Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts holds on to the football too long. Look, I'll be honest. Yeah, Jalen Hurts holds on to the football too long. But you are on some serious-ish if you honestly believe that Marcus Mariota. I think Marcus Mariota would tell you you're out of your mind. Um, You know, it's one game. Jalen Hurts struggled. The offensive line struggled overreact fine but that take is absolutely ridiculous um i'm still riding with Jalen. it's going to take a lot more than one week of him struggling um for me to jump off that bandwagon um but yeah i do i i would not be surprised to unfortunately see dallas take this one um by a field goal so do with that with what you will um and then i do like the over here i think we we see some points being scored um both of these teams this is a must win this is this is kind of it this is the 
the the de facto NFC East uh, championship game. So, Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Birds heading to Dallas. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. And I'll tell you what, as far as uh, David Carr goes, I, I saw that remark. And quite honestly, you got to look at the wins and losses. The Eagles are still 10 and 2. Yeah. I mean, it's one loss. I mean, where is it? Where, are we are we calling for Patrick Mahomes or, or Chad Henney? I mean, they have double the amount of losses and, and all that stuff. But anyways, yeah, it, it was just unbelievable. And, and no personal shots at anybody. But if you're going to make those remarks, it, it's not like that remark came from one of the Manning brothers. <laughs> so, you know, make sure you've got a, a good resume behind you to say I'm really speaking. Make sure so you're the best quarterback in your family. How about that? Let's let's put that down. Thank you. Right, right. And, and even right now, the way that old Derek looks, uh, that mm, anyway, that's a whole other topic. Uh, but I think the Eagles are going to come back. They're going to play a strong game. Dallas, though, wow, Dallas is going to be hard to handle at home. They just love playing in that house. And especially now, uh, the, now they can see it. Hey, wait a second. These guys uh, just got taken down by the 49ers. If, and you just hit on it. These guys are putting a lot of time out there on the field they're, they're they got to be getting them just a little tiny bit fatigued the adrenaline will be up come kickoff time but what's going to happen on this one i think dallas is probably probably going to play it real hard probably sneak out with the win if you want to bet on dallas i would say you do it on the money line but i'm going to take philadelphia to cover so give me philadelphia plus four uh, and i'm not going to be surprised if philadelphia doesn't pull out this one and the over-under, I've seen it drop now. Uh, I just checked Vegas Insider. It's down to 51 and a half. Nice. And uh, so I would definitely take over 51 on this one. Yeah, I think this is this game. The Eagles-Cowboys, it, it's, it always is a fantastic game. It, it might not be th yeah. this level of not 10 and 2 versus 9 and 3, but it's always a bit of a shootout. There's always underlying things. Um, and and final one final thing, just because it popped into my head from the Eagles side of thing, Nick Sirianni, um, I, I think he played this past week wrong because we go back a few weeks ago against Kansas City and he was telling his players, this is just another game. Don't take it personal. This past week, he was apparently showing players, uh, the Niners players talking about this and talking about that. And he specifically told them, take it personal. Well, you got it backwards. If anything, you take the <laughs> loss personal to Kansas City. It's the right. Niners who need to be taking things personal. And I think it was too much emotion. We saw it with Big Dom. Uh, we we stand with you, Big Dom. Um, you know, Dre Greenlaw threw a punch. Let's not forget about that. But yeah, uh, you know, the head of security probably doesn't need to be in the middle of uh, breaking up the sideline uh, tackles. But it, it was way too much emotion, I think, on the Eagles side of things. And I think it was just too much. And they kind of just got too much uh, too much anxiety, too much uh, energy before the game even started and just came out a little flat. So uh, tough one. The last thing I'll say about it, but I, I do think Nick Sirianni did handle that one wrong on that side of it. But uh, another little programming note, we do have two Monday night football games coming up this week. I don't know why. Yes. It's very random. Um, both are going to start at the exact same time. So that's a, okay, fine. Good for you, ESPN, I guess. But anyways, um, one of the games we are going to be talking about, we won't be talking about the Dolphins Titans. That's a huge spread. We'll leave that for other people to deal with, but we are going to be talking about the Green Bay Packers. They're heading to the Giants. Uh, Packers are six and six after their win this past Sunday, Giants four and eight. Um, the Giants seven point favorites, the over under sits at 36 and a half. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is an interesting one. Obviously Green Bay has been. Um, on a bit of a tear, and I think they're like minus 250 to make the playoffs now because their their schedule is so conducive to them. Uh, they have such an easy schedule to kind of finish things out. I think they continue on here. Um, the situation going on in, in New York, not great. Look, Tommy DeVito looked really good last time out. Um, I, I think he comes back down to earth a little bit. I think Green Bay gets the job done. Seven points is a big number. Um, but I'm going to take Green Bay. I, I do think they are seven points better than the Giants. I think they have a lot more to play for than the Giants. Um, and it's not a huge home field advantage. Most of those fans are just coming there to boo. 
um, boo the Giants in the first place. So give me the Giants, or excuse me, give me the Packers to cover. Maybe I'll buy a uh, half a point just to stay under six and a half in case a uh, touchdown gets the job done. Um, and I'm going to stay under 36 and a half. I don't, I don't see the Giants scoring a ton here, and I don't think the Packers need to score a ton here um, to get the job done. So all signs point to an under on this one. But Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Oh, and also, I believe this past Monday night was the first time we've seen a Monday night football game go over. So just keep that in mind. Lots of unders in Monday night football. But Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Green Bay at the Giants. Well, Giants coming off a bye week and riding two-game winning streak, which we didn't think we'd do at all this year. However, they beat the Washington Commanders, and they beat, they scored 10 points to beat the uh, New England Patriots the last time out. That's not going to help them when they go up against Green Bay, who at 6-6. Six and six, uh, The other 6-6, six and six, you know, we, we talk about Buffalo being 6-6, six and six and we're surprised. Wow, they're only 6-6. Six and six. But when we talk about Denver being 6-6, six and six, it's like, wow, look what they've done. Look at the turnaround they've made. Same for Green Bay. Green Bay and Denver are kind of playing similar football right now as far as the momentum and the focus. I, I'm with you. They're going to go into town. And uh, uh, last, I just looked again because it seems like things are changing as we're talking. Um, the line is now six and a half. So we okay. take that half point, it takes you down to six. I'll take the six points for Green Bay. But the over under at 36 and a half, yeah, I'm going to have to stay under on that one because, like, as you said, I don't see. Uh, the Giants, you know, going on a tear and all of a sudden running up 40 points in this game. It's not going to happen. I think Barkley is, um, he's either out or he's definitely far under 100% right now. So he's not going to be a factor. There's only so much he can do behind that offensive line. It's just not very good. Um, but, you know, uh, it does seem like, though, um, Brian Dable's done enough to keep his job, which I think he, he should. Like, I, he had a really good year last year. Um, Daniel Jones going down. I don't think Daniel Jones is worth the money he was paid, but he's definitely better than, you know, kind of the, the, the situation that's been dealt there. Um, I don't think he should have to pay the price, uh, for an injury, unfortunately. So, but I do think, uh, we both yeah expect Green Bay to handle their business there. Uh, next up, uh, look on paper, this, this game doesn't look too intriguing, but it is kind of the de facto AFC or NFC South kind of uh, early championship or like championship one, if you will, it's going to be the five and seven Buccaneers at the six and six Atlanta Falcons, the Falcons probably just because they're at home, but they are going to be two and a half point favorites. And the over under sits at 39 and a half Raider Jim. What are your thoughts? Bucks heading to Atlanta. It's the division that nobody wants. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it, it this goes back to, uh, few years back it was the AFC West it's like everybody had a chance to take out the Chiefs or to compete with the Chiefs it was like the three teams underneath they just all were handing the ball handing the, the wins and losses out like the hot potato I don't want it you take it you take it you take it that's what's happening in this division right now Tampa Bay unfortunately is just on the decline they're not going to right the ship anytime soon Atlanta they're right where they need to be as far as you know being that representative for the, the their division, their conference. So uh, uh, I think at two and a half is what I'm seeing. Or actually, no, it's down to one and a half. So one and a half point spread right now, uh, Atlanta being the favorite. I take Atlanta, take the money line. Over under 39 and a half, give me a half a point and go under 40. This is going to be one of those games where, uh, as, as you said about the Thursday night game, Unless you've got a real vested interest, like your cousin's playing for one of the teams, you're probably not going to sit down to watch it, and they're probably not going to cover it in this region anyway, if the West Coast, that is. Uh, but give me the Falcons to take this one and uh, get one step closer to getting into the playoffs. Yeah, I feel like the uh, NFC South is just who wants to get blown out by the second-place <laughs> team in the NFC East in the playoffs? Who wants to host a playoff game and have their fans be embarrassed um, when either either the Eagles or the um, uh, Eagles or the Cowboys come in and take care of business, and I will say this too, and I, I, I promised I would say it was the last time I was going to talk about the Eagles, but one positive thing that could possibly be of not being the one seed is the way the NFL does their playoff. There's a chance if the if the if the Lions 
are the three seed and say the Eagles are the two seed and the Cowboys are the five seed and whoever NFC South team is the four seed, you expect the Cowboys to win that game. You expect the Eagles and Lions to win. Well, in that case, the Cowboys would then go face the one seed. And as an Eagle fan, no offense to, you know, the Detroit Lions, but I'd rather face the Detroit Lions than the Dallas Cowboys in the divisional round. So the one seed might not be the best spot to be. Obviously, you have to win the best games. Anyway, I'm not saying that. You want the bye. You want home field throughout. But not the end of the world. That's why my focus now is on the NFC East. I promised last time I'm bringing up the Eagles. So back to this one. We are kind of figuring out who's going to be the sacrificial lamb to the second place NFC East team. I'm with you, uh, especially considering this number is dropping. I might wait. I mean, we might be able to get a get a plus number um, on the money line for Atlanta if we wait till Sunday. Yeah. So I don't I don't know what's going on there. Um, Atlanta isn't a team that jumps out to me and you know world beaters, but Tampa isn't either. Um, this is a team that just seems they have moments. I mean, Mike Evans might go down as one of the more underrated wide receivers ever. This is a guy who's had, I believe, a thousand yards now 10 straight seasons, something like that. It's a ridiculous number. This is a guy who just goes out, doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball, gets his thousand yards. Um, and and for the most part, you know, you don't really hear him bitch too much, at least for uh for a wide receiver standards. You know, you will hear him chirp, but for wide receiver standards, um, I think he deserves better, but I don't think he's gonna get it here. I'm with you. Give me Atlanta on the money line. Don't mess around with anything less than two, as I always say. Um, and then under uh, I like that under 40 um, because I think I could see this being a, you know, 17, 14, 16, 13 type yep. field game. It's in a dome it, it, and young way Koo has become, you know, outside of Jake Elliott and Josh uh, and, and Justin Tucker. I think he is kind of that number three, number four type guy in the NFL um, in terms of, you know, consistency and, and, and people to rely on. So keep an eye there. Final game we'll be talking about is a very interesting one between two teams that kind of fighting for different sides of the coin, if you will. <clears throat> it's going to be the Los Angeles Rams. They are six and six on a little bit of a streak. Matthew Stafford looking pretty good lately. They're heading to Baltimore to face the nine and three Ravens who had the best bye week they've had in years. Um, but the Ravens are going to be seven point favorites. The over-under sits at 40 and a half. Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Rams heading across the country to face the Ravens. Yeah, Rams riding a three-game winning streak. Unfortunately, the last two teams they beat were uh, Cleveland and Arizona. So again, that's not like uh, anything to stand in front of a mirror and flex your muscles about. Uh, they, they did take care of business against Cleveland, but Cleveland's kind of beat up right now. And I think we've seen... Uh, the direction Cleveland's going to go for the rest of the season by virtue of all the injuries and no other reason why. But I mean, they were playing good ball at the outset, but uh, they're that horse that uh, out of the gate, they were looking not too bad, but coming down that back stretch, all of a sudden they started falling back in the pack. Uh, Baltimore, on the other hand, is just playing some pretty good ball. Uh, I think they're going to come out, take care of business, it is going to be raining in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. The last I saw, it was like 95, 98% chance it's going to be raining. So the over-under is definitely going to be impacted by that. I think it's going to be more on the ground than anything. Uh, but for the Rams to cover, I see uh, Vegas Insider has it at 7.5 right now on the spread. Mm -hmm. I'll take a half point and give me the Rams plus 8 on that one. They won't win the game, but they'll cover that. I think they'll cover a full touchdown. Actually, maybe they'll lose by four to six uh, and give me under 41 on this one. Yeah, I agree on both of those. Um, I, I'll keep it at plus seven and a half, or excuse me, I'd love plus seven and a half, but minus seven and a half uh, for Baltimore. Um, and that under, yeah, I, Baltimore obviously can score points, but they, they, they haven't really shown that ability to be that, Dolphins type team or even the Niners where they you know it, almost of a blink of an eye they put up 40 points not really the way Baltimore goes about things very kind of more methodical and maybe more field position oriented football so I like that under um and the Rams this is a team that you know you got Puka Nakua 
who's kind of one of the more, you know, good, really feel good stories of the season. Cooper Cup, who's been kind of a non-factor since he's returned. I don't know if the injury is still lingering or what, um, but but I think you got to give a lot of credit to Sean McVay. He has righted, righted this ship uh, a few weeks ago. I think a lot of us, myself included, wrote this team off. And they're right in the thick of it in the in the NFC playoff picture. It's kind of jumbled up at six and six in the NFC, um, but it's going to be a tough one. I don't think they get the job done, but that doesn't really necessarily ruin their. I don't. I don't think ten wins or eleven wins is going to be the cutoff in the NFC. So I think they'll be okay regardless. But yeah, I think they go out and they make a good account of themselves. Wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the way the AFC has been, it, it's almost like you just expect some of these teams to just fall. Um, so wouldn't be surprised to see that to happen, but I, I definitely think the Rams cover here, and I think we stay under the 41. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this game goes. And going back to the Rams, and it's kind of the 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 Browns. I don't know Raider Jim if you saw the differences in Deshaun Watson versus Joe Burrow. Um, so obviously both Deshaun Watson, Joe Burrow, they're out for the seasons. Um, and, and they're, they're, they, with their teams, obviously there was Deshaun Watson. He was up in a suite with his girlfriend, street clothes, obviously kind of chilling, feet up, watching the game. Joe Burrow on the sideline with the pad next to Jake Browning, um, during their game. I just... And there are a lot of people who are frustrated and saying, oh, it's not fair. And I don't know. I think that's a really good point to say, look, Deshaun Watson should probably be down on the sideline. Right. And who knows? Maybe it's Kevin Stefanski going, look, no offense to you, Deshaun, but you don't bring anything to the table. Maybe Deshaun wanted to be there and they told him no. So I will maybe give him the benefit of the doubt on that, but it, it, it did. It wasn't a great look. He it, honestly, if you would have seen the picture, it looked like almost like LeBron would look, you know what I mean? Just an athlete hanging out at a game, not his own game. Um, but it, 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 it was just something, I don't know, popped into my mind. Wonder if you had any thoughts on that, just cause you know, Deshaun Watson off the field stuff. I, I don't agree with that man. Um, I, I, I you know, he obviously took his suspension. I thought it should have been longer, but whatever it is, what it is um, on the field. A lot of other question marks there. Um, but th- that that was something that definitely popped into my mind. I wonder if you had any thoughts on it. Well, you know, again, when you've already drawn the spotlight to yourself, uh, have a little bit of character. Have some humility. Do something that shines a different type of a spotlight on yourself and your character. And again, like you say, we don't know. Maybe they told us, yeah. stay up in the booth. We don't want you down here. But I guarantee you... Uh, like the guy or not like the guy, I think if he would be allowed to, you'd probably see Aaron Rodgers on the sideline and and tell him the coaches, you need to call this, you need to call that, and even going over and talking to the quarterback, you know, while the defense is on the field. I and mean, those are the guys that invest themselves. You wouldn't see Patrick Mahomes sitting up, up in the skybox with his wife or his girlfriend or you know, his wife uh, mm-hmm. and his family and all that. He'd be down on the sideline. So I do agree with you on that. Again, we don't know the particulars of that, but wow, some of these guys, uh, this is kind of like the culture that has been fostered though uh, throughout sports and and the players are, you know, they have slowly but surely they've all gotten bigger than the game and therefore, hey, we put the money, we, we put the money in the bank accounts, we put the fans in the seats. So they kind of get to, Depending on who they are, they get to have a little more leeway on uh, their behavior and things like that. Standards, standards are definitely missing in certain places. I hear Von Miller, Von Miller, for uh, oh, the nonsense that he's going on. Oh, uh, they said he's cleared; he's going to play this coming week. So and, you know, um, and and I will say, look, it, it, it you do want to allow certain things to go you know the law and it's not a immediate you know we do still have the innocent until proven guilty type stuff but i do think sometimes when those things are out there um it needs to be hey look take take a few weeks off you need to figure out what you're doing on that side of it because if this comes back and 
you know, everything was yeah. as we hear it. Um, that's going to look real bad when you realize that, oh, two weeks after this thing happened, Von Miller had three sacks in a game against Kansas City. Not great optics for a, for a, for a league that wants to strive, um, you know, to, to kind of, it, it almost seems like they want to be on everyone's good side, uh, but you, you can't do that sometimes. Sometimes you got to make some tough calls. Uh, but yeah, it, it is a little, little disheartening. Now I will say for the Deshaun Watson thing, I'm starting to believe that it wasn't told by him to stay away because I feel like the minute that narrative gets out to the media, I think if you're Stefanski, you come out and say, look, it needs to be on the record. I told him I don't want him on the sideline or someone right. needs to come out and say that. I haven't heard that. Um, so it kind of leads me to believe that it was up to him and he chose the suite. So it is what it is. So, but that is all we have for you on the game pick side of things. Raider Jim, your final thoughts for week 14 of the NFL weekly here on the network. Oh, I got to revisit something I brought up last week. And unfortunately it's not the same level of intensity. I have to give uh, again, more congratulations to San Diego, St. Augustine Saints who won their uh, CIF division playoff game for San Diego and won the title. But when they went up against St. Bonaventure, the number 18 team on Saturday with, Four minutes left, they were up by a couple touchdowns, and they just couldn't hang on and actually lost their state playoff game. Final play of the game. Final score, 21-20, but St. Augustine with your freshmen, your hot freshmen and, and your uh, sophomores, you guys went out there, took care of business, hold your heads high, you got nothing to be ashamed of. Amen. Good, good showing here in the San Diego side of things. St. Bonaventure, yeah. is that L.A., right? Sounds like That's an L.A. Correct. school, one of the tr Trinity schools, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it's tough. L.A. has some really, really good programs up there. A lot of private schools that have a uh, modern day. I think it's number one in the country right now. And they are just an absolute tank. They're churning out D1 prospects. But uh, so good show in there from from St. Augustine there. Um, my side of things, um, the Walter Walter Payton Man of the Year awards uh, nominees for each team were announced. And for the Eagles, it was Lane Johnson and. If you know Lane Johnson, he's arguably one of the greatest tackles to ever play. Um, and he is a, a fantastic story. And if you know kind of the other side of Lane Johnson, he he battled with mental health. Um, and, uh, you know, once he kind of, you know, got that under control and, you know, if you can get that under control or was able to deal with that, he then became a huge advocate and was one of the few, you know, him and Dak Prescott were kind of the two guys leading the charge. And others, I'm not discounting others, but the two that kind of jump into my mind that were leading that charge, you know, early in 2015, things like that for the men's mental health, you know, get out, talk, blah, 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 that type of stuff is very impactful for that. So he's being honored um, and and 31 other fantastic, uh, you know, leaders with their organizations. Um, but I thought that was a good opportunity. Look, it's we're recording on the uh, 6th of December. Um, the holidays, as Raider Jim said, we had 18 to 18 shopping days. Um, the holidays are a time, a lot of merry joy and things like that. But there are, you know, times for a lot of people um, that it's not that. Uh, a lot of people struggle mightily during the holidays. Um, and a lot of people struggle in silence. I was talking to my grandmother the other day. Uh, we were watching Jumanji and we were talking about Robin Williams. Um, a lot of people with Robin Williams, they would have told you, and, and a lot of times with suicide and things like that, they would never have known. They seemed like the happiest person on the outside. Um, check. So, so my final, my final thought is check in on your loved ones, kind of, kind of look them in the eye, get, get more than, oh, I'm doing okay. Or I'm doing fine. Maybe prod a little and see, you know, just see what you can do. Try and, uh, try and talk it out um and uh, and check in on your loved ones check in on your people that maybe you haven't checked in on uh lately uh and you never know you never know what that check-in could do for somebody so with that thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the nfl weekly here on the first off the bench podcast network everyone comes off the bench we are first it is time for y'all to go wash your hands and stop hating everybody talk to y'all very soon take care Peace out.